What is going on guys? Headed to Avant-Garde Exotics, which is always a fun time. Monterey Car Week is next week, so I wanted to make sure that all my cars are in tip-top shape. I'm gonna be driving the 600 LT up to Monterey, and then I've got a group of friends, so I'm gonna let one of them drive the Supra, we can have both vehicle virgins whips out in Monterey. So if you see either one of the cars while you're at car week, make sure to come and say hi. I promise I don't bite. And if you see me at one of the car shows, obviously come up and say hi as well. Excited to see the guys at AGX. It has been a while. Let's head there. If you guys are coming to Monterey car week and bringing a cool car that you're down for me to do a video on, Send me a message on Instagram at Vehicle Virgins to send me a personal DM. It can be an old classic car, it can be a heavily modified supercar, or even a stock hypercar. But it'd be fun to do some meetups with you guys and film some of your cars. But before we get to AGX, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Van True. Now, there's a million different reasons why having a dash cam in your car at all times is a good idea. And the Van True N2S is one of the absolute best dash cams on the market. For one, it takes all of 30 seconds to install the camera easily clips onto the suction mount and then you just plug it into your cigarette lighter and you're good to go. I love that it's got dual cameras. The front can record in up to 4K and the rear camera can record in 1440p. You've also got a nice display here to see exactly what it's pointed at. It's got a 24 seven parking mode, which is activated by either motion or a collision. So you've got peace of mind even when you leave your car. The N2S also uses a super capacitor. So it operates in extreme temperatures ranging from 14 degrees to 150 degrees. It's also got infrared night vision with Sony Starvis, so it's got incredible filming capabilities at nighttime. So guys, click the link in the description below and use the code in the description for 20% off the Vantrue N2S, one of the absolute best dash cams on the market. I highly recommend it. All right, on to the video. Pulling up to AGX. Look, we got a Mach-E, sweet Aventador 720S. It is a full house in here. Oh my gosh. Got some pretty cool cars in the parking lot. Check out the exhaust on this Aventador. I imagine that's where it splits into the quad exhaust for the massive rear end. Check out this stripped out NSX. I love the color on this thing. This is badass. Wow, this 570S is loud. Pulling this thing off the rack so we can pull my Supra up for the oil change. I actually really like the spec on this. The color on this SV is absolutely gorgeous. I actually love this. Look at the size of this SV tire. It's 355 millimeters. That is insane. All right, we got Mitch and Mark hard at work on a Mercy Lago engine. Okay, true. This is how we play spin the bottle. But it's really <laughs> is that what you're doing? <laughs> You're adjusting the cam the timing? Is, which one's up, me or Mark? Did, did it really take you 10 minutes to go that far? That's all you went, right? Well, 10 hey, seconds. it's not about the speed, it's, yeah. you know. It was the torque. They gave it his there. heart. And it's on point. It must have been slow-mo on it to turn around uh, Arthur's camera. From precision, okay? It's too much power. I, have I to like this. Down. This is a really accurate measuring tool. It's better. The factory one doesn't even have that. So this is a- uh, Not fair enough. On top of it. It's coat hanger technology. So what's the current issue with this motor? I had an older motor with, with camshafts that are worn out, so just resetting the uh, the timing and the lift and the, all that good stuff that goes with it. It tells you when to start checking your intake measurement, but it doesn't tell you at what point you can begin to start checking your exhaust measurement. So do you check that at top dead center, or do you check that before top dead center? It's all very confusing. So apparently the data you get on the 6.5 liter cars, the LP640s, gives you all the information you need before you even take the motor apart in terms of cam timing, but this is like some foreign territory where they don't tell you anything whatsoever. The issue is over the course of 40,000 miles, the lobes on the camshafts wear down, so then all of a sudden the timing is off and they have to figure out how to get it back in proper timing. And then apparently the directions are in Italian translated to English, which makes it literally impossible. But the wizard will figure it out. I'll be called worse. <laughs> this is the first set of spacers I've ever seen that actually attaches using the factory retaining hole. Oh, interesting. See that? So when you take these things off, they don't just fall on the ground. Huh? You know, and it stays lined up and everything. So they somebody decided to utilize the original caliper bolt. I mean, the original rotor retainer bolt. And so when they put this thing on, it stays. Look, I can't take it off. Is that how this guy has 355s on the back? 
Oh, every little bit counts, so 10 mil spacers. Yeah. So the last time I was here getting an oil change on my 600 LT, they were working on this first generation Murcielago and converting it to an LP640 powertrain, and they've actually finished it entirely with the 6.5 liter. That is pretty cool. So check this out. They just found a diagnostics mode inside of the Supra. They're trying to clear the oil light on the car with a scan tool. This car can actually go into a diagnostics mode itself. Check this out. So if you tap this three times and then press and hold this button, diagnostics mode active. Check it out. We got engine oil, vehicle check, brake fluid, there's no blinker fluid option, unfortunately. And up we go. All right, step one is getting this skid plate off. Throwback to doing the downpipe install. That was such a pain in the butt. This Mercy Lago sounds so insane. This is the one with the crazy exhaust, right? <laughs> Uh, get, your, get your game on, Alright, well it turns out guys, you don't actually have to remove the skid plate. It's got this piece that you just twist off to make it easy. I like that. And there we go. I gotta say guys, while the SVJ is definitely the most intense looking version or normal version of the Lamborghini Aventador, the SV in my eyes has always been maybe the best looking Aventador that they've ever made. What do you guys think? Comment in the comment section below. What is your favorite Aventador of all time? They just came out with the Aventador Ultime, which is the ultimate edition of the Aventador. It's kind of a combo of the Aventador S and the SVJ. Same power as the SVJ, but a little bit more drivable. I wonder how pissed the people with SVJs that thought that was the last iteration of the V12 Lamborghini are, now that they come out with a more limited version, the Aventador Ultime, that honestly doesn't look as cool as the SVJ. So check this out, they're using this tool here to measure valve lift, and then on the other side, they've got a measurement of top dead center, which she is approaching right now. I've pretty much learned from AGX at this point that as cool as Murcielagos are, they are an absolute maintenance nightmare. They end up like this more often than not. So all of the oil is now drained from the Supra. Just gotta replace the old oil filter with the new one and then fill it up with some good oil. And it'll be good to go. Here is the old filter compared to the new one. My poor Supra literally still has dust in the engine bay from that time two years ago where I off-roaded it in Las Vegas. All right, a little story time for you guys with this car. So that green Lamborghini Huracan is actually the reason why I've ever stepped foot in AGX and why I've become friends with all these guys. I saw it first, Mark was driving it at this epic Lamborghini only rally. I was in my green Huracan and I heard the supercharger whine and asked him a bunch of questions about the car. I became obsessed with it, ended up talking to VF Engineering, got my car supercharged and the rest is history. Anytime I've got a car that needs any sort of maintenance work on it or mods on it, I come to Avant Garde Exotics. All right, I got a nail in my rear right tire. Getting that fixed. Another great trip to AGX. Just finished up some lunch with the guys. We got the oil changed and we got that tire plug. So it should be good to go for my friend to drive it during Monterey Car Week. I actually can't even describe how pumped I am for Car Week. The fact that they didn't have it last year was one of the low points for me uh, of last year because I always look forward to Monterey Car Week. Like I said, it is literally my favorite week of the entire year. I believe Quail, which is one of the coolest events of the show, is on Friday. I'll be going to that. I could be wrong, maybe it's on Saturday, but whatever day it is, uh, headed to Quail. And then on Sunday, for sure, doing Pebble Beach. Although one of the coolest parts about Pebble Beach is you don't actually have to pay to visit the concept lawn and they've got some really cool cars every year out on the lawn. So that's a kind of a cool little freebie secret. Uh, definitely gonna go to Rolex Motorsport Reunion. They have some crazy cars and some really cool classic cars racing around at Laguna Seca for multiple days. And there's Legends of the Autobahn. There's so many different events. I'm gonna try to go to as many as possible to cover for you guys. And like I said at the beginning of this video, if you guys are going to Car Week and have a cool car that you're down for me to film a video with, I'd love to do it. So message me on Instagram, at Virgins. I'm so excited to see you guys at Monterey Car Week. 
Oh, it's gonna be an incredible, incredible time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. <laughs>